Welcome back to Faith Fridays, where we talk about faith issues in practical everyday life. As you can see, we are back here in church, where it's unusually quiet compared to before, where there was a constant buzz of people walking in and out uh, before the MCO. But like every other church and religious institution, Agape has had to close our doors in accordance to the MCO regulations. Um, and there has been a need to do that to keep people safe. By now, we all know that the church is the people and this is our church building. But I'm sure just like me, all of you actually miss being around. So why not you join us and as we go around, have a quick look. You know, we certainly look forward to be able to meet together as a church family yes, once again. Sir. And it is our hope, uh, it's a hope that we carry because we know this too shall pass one day. But until that day, we need to keep the flame going, keep the fl flame of faith going, uh, the love for our brothers and sisters active and the compassion for the lost burning bright. Yep. Today, we have the pleasure of talking to our senior pastor, Reverend Benjamin Yo, to hear his thoughts about the church and faith for today and for the future. So let's... Welcome, Pastor Ben, and thank you for making time. My pleasure. Okay. It's been almost two months of MCO now and online has been filled with people doing all kinds of things for during this MCO, like making Dalgona coffee <laughs> and all sorts of things. How have you been filling your time? Well, uh, in the initial phase of the MCO, uh, I've been working, I must confess, more at home than from home, uh, tending on many chores that I've put off since Christmas last year. So I've been doing all kinds of things, uh, many work at home, uh, so much so to the extent that my neighbour uh, immediate neighbor asked me, uh, how many projects have you undertaken so far? <laughs> you know? uh, and from the second phase of the MCO onwards, I've been coming to church uh, every day, almost every day except Sunday, uh, in the mornings to do my exercise walk uh, within the church compound, and then also to water the plants and tend to some other things. Uh, as a whole, uh, in terms of recreation, I've been watching quite a bit of television, uh, programs on Astro, uh, and also catching up on my reading that I really enjoy. And uh, just within this MCO period, I'm in my, in my third book. Uh, I, time passes by so very quickly and uh, I don't feel bored, you know. Uh, have I been passing my time well? I've been enjoying home-cooked meals. Uh, breakfast, I'm asking what's for lunch, lunch, I'm asking what's for tea, and tea, asking what's for dinner, you know, uh, Monica, cooking skills, culinary skills have improved tremendously, and also I've been blessed by the punks, my in-laws, Sister Pang, they send food over. So uh, I'm not complaining at all, in fact, I'm enjoying this phase of my life and getting a foretaste of what retirement would be like. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the entire history of Agape, since you stepped as senior pastor, uh, we've probably had a weekend service of some sort mm -hmm. every weekend without fail, where people could gather to worship God. And that's as far as I remember as well. There's never been an actual break. But these last two months have been quite unique. And we've not been able to gather for worship together, uh, but we have to do it on our own instead. And no one really knows how long this could, could last. It could be months before we're able to gather properly again. Mm -hmm. How do you think this has affected the faith of our church community as a whole and individuals? Well, uh, one thing for sure that uh, this new norm or normal uh, virtual online uh, church services or approach to church service uh, has inevitably uh, shifted the focus of faith from that of institutional to personal. Uh, faith is no longer attached to a church service, a particular church service in a particular premise or locality or locale or, or particular building for that matter. Um, with the MCO, um, every day is like Sunday or Sunday is like every other day, you know, no difference at all. Uh, this pandemic has kind of uh, in some ways uh, brought about a greater personal awareness uh, of God in our daily lives on a daily basis for many of us. And yet for some others, 
uh, whose faith has always been tied up to a Sunday service where they come uh, to churches on Sunday. Uh, well, for these people, probably they have caused them to even uh, be more detached from God, I would say. You know, and not just from God, from the very life of the church. Mm-hmm. This, is, this can be a worrying trend on its own. Um, what kind of disciples do you think will be produced from this season or this pandemic as a whole? Because uh, there's this article that I read not long ago, I think it's from churchleaders.com, that talk about how these times will be a shifting time uh, for believers' faith between those who are true believers and those who are Sunday goers. And this will actually, in the end, produce the best or deepest kind of disciples the world has ever seen for a generation to be um, a deeper sort of disciple than ever before. Would you agree and why? Uh, I Probably my immediate response would be no, I would not agree uh, because uh, basically uh, what we are going through right now is not persecution per se where our faith are test, is tested, whereby we have to stand for our faith and our beliefs, you know. Uh, yes, it's a matter of life and death situation as far as this pandemic is concerned, uh, but really it's more of a inconvenience, uh, not so much a testing, testing, you know. Mm. And so I would probably disagree with that. Mm. So what kind of uh, disciples do you think will be produced in the end? Oh. Probably uh, disciples who will take responsibility for their own personal faith. And like I said, uh, not so much an institutional Christianity, but something which is personal, where on a daily basis people be more conscious and aware of God, which uh, I think, uh, just for me, uh, I speak for myself, uh, it's strange, you know, it's like uh, every day is like I'm, I'm becoming more aware of God, connecting with God, praying, singing, something like that. So I think uh, not necessarily uh, believes a stronger faith, but probably more connected with God. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, we've been having services online for a while now, uh, videos, prayer mm-hmm. meeting on Facebook Live, and this is beginning to look like a new kind of norm. Uh, do you think that these things will affect or change the way we do church long term? Uh, put it this way, I'm no prophet, but if I am and if I can predict you know, that it's going to be a long term thing, and this new norm would be the norm or nominal thing that we're going to do for life. Uh, probably, if that is so, uh, I'll probably ask the board to sell the church buildings, sell the church vehicles, uh, sell all our properties, and then take all of the money, uh, invest in a real uh, state-of-the-art studio, and I'm sure the media people will say amen to that. You know, the best of equipments, but I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, my understanding in the Bible uh, of the Bible in regards to salvation is that God uh, has called us out of darkness to His marvelous light. And reading the scriptures in the Old and New Testament has always been about a community of people where God takes us from the world and places us uh, in the setting of a family, the family of God, uh, the people of God, the community of God for that matter. Uh, and uh, much of the apostles, uh, Apostle Paul's writing or uh, pieces were actually written to uh, Christians in churches in a community, all right? And uh, people are com- uh, congregated in a certain place and, and much of the scriptures do with believers' uh, dealings and uh, living in regards to how the uh, interpersonal relationship, so to speak, in a community setting. And so we cannot and should not underestimate and play down the need and the value, the importance of the local church uh, that meets physically. All right. Um, the challenging thing is this. Um, w- with the last two months or however long it takes that we cannot have service, uh, I'm sure some Christians, I hope it's not many, would be so comfortable about not going to church that when you can come to church again, they would say there's no necessity to meet. There's no necessity to come to church. Uh, there's so much uh, option out there in regards to messages and still worship God at home. But I think that's not the point. That's a danger, but that's not the point. I think uh, we cannot underestimate the value of meeting physically. Uh, the book of Revelation, for example, addresses seven churches uh, from the island of Patmos uh, when 
the Apostle Johnson, his writings, uh, right from Ephesus or Alaska, Laodicea, uh, they were actually actual churches uh, in Asia Minor, and they were the actual roots starting, you know, from Ephesus to Laodicea. And that has to do with church congregating. Revelation is a, a end time book, so to speak. And the message in Revelation is still very, very relevant for us as a church today. And so with that said, so in short, I'm of the opinion that uh, this pandemic will pass at some point, but we will resume services sometime in the future. And we will. That's wonderful. I think all of us are can't wait to meet up together again yeah, as the church and miss each other. Once it's safe together again uh, and we are able to have services or class or what have you again, what do you think will be the first thing we might do as a church? Well, uh, that's a very hard question. And uh, the easy answer to this question is the first thing that we'll do if we can have service again is to have service. <laughs> that's the easy, question, uh, easy answer. Uh, but I'd probably like to rephrase this question by how will our first service look like? You know, uh, I would say that there will be an extended time of praise and worship. Uh, we won't hurry to that because it's the community of people coming together once again to worship God as a people of God, a called out people of God, a called together people of God. Uh, we just want to take time to give thanks to God for the victory, for His strength and His grace, uh, seeing us through, uh, just rejoicing and celebrating the goodness of God. Uh, also taking time for congregational reading of God's Word, uh, of selecting selected, uh, selected passages of scriptures. And then we want to end with a time where we can actually uh, respond to God and align our lives, you know, and say that we cannot do church the same, same again, you know, the same way it is. And there's something must change, you know. And so I'm looking forward to that. And probably uh, find a way if we can. I don't know, just a thought. I don't know how to put it in writing or, or just to take a little bit more thinking to in regards to the process, how we can celebrate and also appreciate frontliners throughout the last few months, whatever it may be, how long it takes, mm. just to let them know that, you no, know, thank you so much you know, for doing what you did for us. Mm. It's wonderful. It's exciting to think about that first service. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, After all, you know, I always said, we always said that our church is not just a church in the community, but for the community. Yeah. And the community has done so much, especially frontliners for yes. us. Yes, that's right. Um, you mentioned earlier about coming to church to water the plants and a lot of people might not know this but during your off days even before all this pandemic uh, Pastor Ben comes often to trim the plants, maintain the church building, furnitures and what have you and this last one week has been no different uh, you have come and worked the grounds uh, without anyone seeing or knowing running church vans, washing the toilets, wiping down the chairs even and trimming the plants again uh, it's something that you don't actually need to do as a senior pastor. So I guess I would like to ask, what motivates you to do it anyway? Well, like you say, yes, it is not my job, but it's just me. You know, I uh, always say that what we do is always, in terms of vocation, uh, it's always an expression, an extension of who we really are, how God has wired us and made us. So uh, though it's not my job description, it's just me. Uh, probably I also do the things that others uh, cannot do, would not do, or maybe it's not their passion to do. Uh, for example, I don't expect someone uh, who doesn't take care of his car to take care of church car. So I think everything boils down to passion. I also think uh, the formative years of my ministerial life, where at the age of 22, I went to ministry, planted my first church, and during those days, pioneering is very different from the way we pioneer work these days. It's like you are just left there alone, you know, and you have to do like the Chinese probably says, uh, one leg kick, you know, you do everything from song leading to opening the church, closing. So probably the formative years uh, of anybody's ministry, you know, will probably see them through the rest of our lives. So probably that too. Um, most of all, I believe in good stewardship and maintenance of properties, be it buildings, uh, equipments, uh, vehicles, or what have you. And those things cost money. And uh, I guess probably if all of us, especially 
uh, paid staff, I'm become paid staff, not so much because uh, you're, you, you guys are not doing, but we are most of the time in church, you know. Uh, probably you need to be responsible towards the things since uh, we are mostly in church you know, and, and things do cost money. So probably I come from a very different generation of people as a baby boomer. Um, so probably I'm just different probably. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> You know, I think that it takes a lot of humility for a leader. Uh, I mean, a leader to have a lot of humility to be able to still do these things without being seen and without forcing people to do it with them. I think it really does. And in the same spirit that we talk about uh, in this question, uh, what would you hope to see in the current and future leaders and members of our church uh, if you would be able to say something to them? Well, I guess... Uh... It has to do with stewardship and ownership. Uh, I think these are uh, two diametrically opposing words. When you talk about stewardship, you're not the owner, you know, but you're steward of God's things. But yet, uh, I'm looking at stewardship in that uh, we are, are supposed to be good stewards of everything that God has blessed us with and given us. Uh, when I talk about ownership, uh, I'm just thinking that we, we actually take responsibility of, of our roles, our responsibilities, our, our job description, the things that God has blessed us with. Uh, we always uh, go to, always visit people's house and, and I can see that there are two kinds of owners. Uh, some are house proud and some aren't or aren't. And, and so the same thing, church proud, you know. So I would like to see uh, members, uh, uh, leaders, you know, just being church proud. You know, that, that's something that, you know, we are proud of what we have mm -hmm. and put our sweat, our tears, our money into doing what we're doing. Uh, the other thing is also initiative, like you said, uh, it's not my JD, but it's my joy to do the things I do. So I would like to see that you know, uh, being replicated you know, and in church leaders and anyone that is associated with Agape. Um, again, like I say pride in what we do. Yep. So everything we have here in Agape is a gift from God. And I'm sure we all agree with that. We have blessed beyond measure, you know. Um, people come to Agape, you know, uh, whether it's for our Easter musical or whether it's for GLS or just a Sunday service. Uh, they go away uh, saying, oh, we are so blessed, you know. And we who are here day in, day out, probably we take all of this uh, uh, for granted. Um, but we need to value things. We need to take ownership. Uh, we need to be responsible, be initiative, uh, taking good care of the things that God has blessed us with. So I think I would like to see that very much uh, at every level of leadership, you know, and even people who just are members of a company. Thank you so much, Pastor Ben, for taking time and sharing your heart today. Oh, it's my joy and a privilege, you know, and I trust that uh, we will continue to do church and we will continue to give our best, bring our best to the table and... Who knows, you know, uh, God will continue to bless us with greater things as we are stewards of the little that God has given us. So, thank you, Anne. Amen. God okay, bless thank you. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Hope that you guys have been blessed with the interview with Pastor Ben. There's a lot of wisdom and great things in there. So, for those of you who are connecting with your Connect group or with your families, you can uh, use this question that's on the screen to help you along with your discussion. Reminder to those who have already signed up for our online financial workshop with Rajan Devadasan. The workshop is tomorrow at 8 pm. Please be reminded to log in at least five minutes before 8 pm. We have already emailed you the ID and password and some materials. If you have not received them, please email us at this email so that we can send it to you as well. Don't forget to log in this Sunday for our online service on our website. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. Take care.